Indie Mogul. This week on Indie News, new behind the scenes video from The Dark Knight Rises, a creative conversation 20 years in the making, some simple lighting tips from Dave Knopp and Ryan Connolly, and I explain H.264 and how to export video for the web. Hey Indie Mogulers, last week Spider-Man topped the box office earning $140 million in only six days. I'm a fan of the comics, so I really enjoyed the film, but it can be a little silly, which has me really excited for a more serious hero film. In fact, it's the film most anticipated by Mogulers, The Dark Knight Rises, which opens July 20th in the US. And here's a 13-minute sneak peek released this weekend, featuring behind-the-scenes shots, cast interviews, and new images from the film. Many of you probably already saw this video that's earned over 5 million views in four days. 32-year-old Jeremiah McDonald in a hilarious conversation with his 12-year-old self. Great editing, and a reminder that regardless what video equipment you have, your idea is what's most important. Recently, Dave Knopp shared a simple trick for manipulating sunlight using an inexpensive foam board to bounce light into his shots. And last week, Ryan Connolly demonstrated a similar tip using a white cloth to reflect overhead light or a black cloth to absorb the light. Last Monday on Indie News, I shared the details of how I produce this show, and many of you had great follow-up questions, including Way Too Fast and Gasty SK9, who wanted to know how long the production takes. It takes one really busy day for me to finish this show. It's about three hours to write the show, three hours to shoot it, and six hours to edit it. And My Crazy Productions and Oki Company wanted to know more about my export settings. So let's take an in-depth look at compressing video for the web. When I first started publishing videos online, I feel like the various compression options were really confusing. But nowadays, there's one codec that's become the standard in HD video, called H.264. It's also known as AVC, and it's used all over the place for uploading video to YouTube, on broadcast television, and Blu-ray discs. It's a popular choice because the quality is good, but the files are smaller than other formats. For example, my camera shoots in H.264, but to edit, Final Cut Pro 7 converts these files to ProRes, which can be up to 10 times bigger. The new Final Cut 10 can edit H.264 natively. This is great because video now takes up a lot less space on my hard drive, but the downside is heavily compressed video is more processor intensive to play back. That's why it takes a stronger computer to handle Final Cut Pro 10. It's also why some video streaming websites can be pretty hard on your computer. A heavily compressed television show will download quickly, no buffering, but it's asking your computer to do a lot more of the work. So how does H.264 make video into smaller files? Instead of storing every single pixel in every frame of video, it blocks similar colors together into chunks of data. This is called spatial compression, and it's the same way a JPEG file compresses a photograph. If a file is too compressed, you can see these pixely chunks of color. Because this is video, we also have temporal compression. That just means that if I'm the only part of the frame that's moving, that side of the frame isn't doing anything, the compressor can just write one piece of data that says, run that image for the next 300 frames. H.264 also uses motion compensation, so that when camera movements follow predictable motion paths, the compressor doesn't have to write all the data in every frame, when much of the data is the same, just shifted slightly. The quality of this compression will depend on the data rate. I use a pretty small file size for this show, about 2 megabits per second. That's only 15 megabytes for every minute of video. For this show, I think that looks okay. What do you think? But YouTube recommends 5 megabits per second for video in 720 resolution, and 8 megabits per second for 1080, because the frame is bigger. Whenever I've worked with broadcasters, they generally want H.264 at 15 megabits per second. If you want to see the difference on YouTube, I've uploaded four separate test videos at 1, 2, 5, and 15 megabits per second. Most editing software, including Final Cut Pro 10, can export H.264 through simple presets, like this built-in YouTube uploader. But if you want complete control over the quality and data rate, you should tweak the video export settings, or use separate conversion software like Compressor. 
It includes several presets, like this one for sharing HD video online, which outputs H.264 at 10 megabits per second. You can always change the data rate and save your own preset if you're like me and often use the same settings. Here are some additional settings to double check when uploading to YouTube. Make sure the frame size and frame rate are correct or will pass through the same settings that you're editing in. Also, if you're shooting in standard definition or 1080i, you'll want to deinterlace your footage before publishing online. Now that I've saved custom presets in Compressor, I can export in Final Cut Pro 10 using those settings. And because I keep the data rate fairly low, this episode only takes 5 to 10 minutes to upload to YouTube, and it should load pretty fast for you. Some of you may be wondering, what's the difference between H.264 and MP4 or AVI? File extensions like .mp4, .avi, .mov are called containers because they contain the video file, but they don't control the kind of compressor used. So an H.264 file can be an MP4 or an MOV, but an MOV can also be a ProRes file. Just, just depends on what you've used. So let me know if you have any other compression or exporting questions, and I'll do my best to answer those in the comments. Speaking of questions, this Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, Russell and I are doing a live Q&A right here on the Indie Mogul YouTube channel. So tune in this Wednesday at 2 p.m. New York Time, that's 7 p.m. London Time, and we'll answer live questions. But you can also post your questions now, and that'll give us a chance to sift through them and pick out some of the best ones before the show. On today's playlist, I have the Dark Knight featurette, Jeremiah McDonald's conversation with his 12-year-old self, Dave Knopp's foam board lighting tip, and Film Riot's most recent episode about lighting with one light. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you back here Wednesday, live.